The next morning I carried Granny on my back again and took her to the neighboring hospital. I thought I'd take the day off for my part-time job just in case, and I called Hagasan. Even though it was called a hospital, this is the old resident district, so it meant the facilities were old and small. There were few doctors and it was always crowded. It was wearing down here and there, and it couldn't be complimented on how sanitary it was either. But all the people in the hospital were kind. They knew Granny from earlier, and when I called, they said we could come immediately. Granny hated going to the hospital, and always said she could take care of herself. But today she obediently underwent the medical examination. Perhaps she'd been enduring the pain out of pride. They said her hip wasn't that bad, and it could be treated at home. So I carried Granny home after the examination. When I laid Granny on a futon inside, she said she'd only be sleeping so I should go to my job already. I was still worried, but once Granny begins speaking, she won't listen to anything. When I talked with Hagasan on the phone, and he said it was okay if I could come as soon as I could for now, and I decided to go to the shop. No subject, Kojaku. I feel uneasy as I go into the shop, and eventually I receive a message. It's from Kojaku. I saw Mizuki, but something seemed strange. When I talked to him, he kept spacing out and wouldn't react. I think you'd be better off listening instead of me. If you have time, do contact him. I'll come talk about the details later. Mizuki... Something must be strange if Kojaku even sent me a message about it. Maybe he really is overdoing it. I leave the counter, walk towards the toilet, and call Mizuki. Mm. Oh, hello, Mizuki? Oh my god. Alba, huh? What's the matter? Good. He answered the phone. I feel a little relieved. Uh huh, nothing. I don't really have anything important to say, I just wanted to talk. Oh my god, what? We just like, saw each other yesterday. You're a weirdo. <laughs> uh, I was just wondering if you're okay. <laughs> of course I am. Why? Because when we met yesterday, I thought you didn't seem so hot. Just a little, though. Oh my god. So you called because you were worried about me? Thanks. But really, I'm okay. Really? Oh my god, yeah. Alright, alright. Well then, let's talk some more another time. Oh my god, right? Okay, bye. Hmm. After the call, I sigh and head back to the counter. There was no life in Mizuki's voice after all. He said he was okay, so I didn't listen too deeply, but... On top of Granny falling down yesterday, my worries just keep growing. I hope they're just imaginary fears. I spent the rest of the afternoon worrying about Mizuki and Granny, unable to concentrate on work. When I come back home after my part-time job, I restlessly try to open the lock on the front door. I wonder if Granny behaved herself. However, I stop my hand halfway. Oh shit, what's going down? Something strange. Huh? When I insert the key, something feels different. Don't tell me. It's open. The door isn't locked. Did I go out without locking it again? Oh, this is bad. Granny's inside. What do I do if something happened? The bonds between the people in the community are strong, but security isn't tight, and it wasn't uncommon to hear of thieves. I feel sick of my own forgetfulness, and I enter the house, listening carefully. There doesn't seem to be any sign of people. I take off my shoes and enter the corridor before heading straight to Granny's room. I open the door quietly and peep inside to find Granny sleeping, buried in the futon. Looks like nothing's happened. I heave a sigh of relief, and return to the corridor. Hmm? I stopped going up the stairs. Something... felt strange. 
It's quiet in the house because Granny was sleeping, and there's nothing particularly strange. Is it my imagination? I twist my neck as I walk up the stairs and open the door to my room. Inside, I realize that it wasn't just my imagination. What? What's all this? Not that it's anything to brag about, but my room was never particularly clean. There were books and magazines piled up on the floor, and there were also many things I just left there because cleaning them up would be a pain. But I don't remember it being this dirty. The room is a complete mess, almost like a storm blew its way through it. There are no places left to stand. Everything has been pulled out, and even the table was turned over. And in the middle of it all sits something that I would have never wanted to see. A person is sitting in front of the computer monitor, just boldly sitting there. I can only think of one thing this person might be. It's just like what I was thinking of earlier. Thief! What are you doing in someone else's room? The person in front of the computer looks up slowly, as if he only just realizes my presence. He's a completely unfamiliar face, and I've never seen him before in my life. He seems to be about the same age as me. Welcome back. What? Who are you? And why are you in my room? By the way... He ignores me as I tremble with anger and taps on the keyboard with his middle finger. Hey! I didn't say you could touch that! I don't understand the data inside of here at all. What is this even supposed to be? Even the all matri modeling program here is complicated. Who the hell are you? Like hell I tell you, just get out! Ugh. The man laughs through his nose as if he's looking down on me and stands up. Eh, hey, you. Don't you know who I am? What? Oh, I think you do know, though. I don't know you at all. You've got the wrong guy. Hmm. The man looks into my eyes and opens his mouth slowly. This time, it is such an honor. So let us have a fun game, yes? Ugh. I've heard that somewhere before. What? Where was it? I had a very unpleasant feeling. Still don't know. The man takes something out of his pants pocket. It's something full of rabbit heads. A keychain. I mean, not to mention his kind of outfit is sort of decorated with bunnies. <laughs> this guy. Satisfied with my reaction, the man drops the keychain and looks at me. It was a pretty entertaining setup, wasn't it? Misdirected home delivery and all. Were you the drive buyer back then? And the home delivery? Were you the one that ordered from us? Well, yeah. When I investigated various things, I found out you worked there. So I thought I'd have you come to me instead. I paid in advance. So there's no problems for the shop, right? <laughs> That's not the issue. I recall how completely at a loss Hagasan was, and the anger wells up. By the way, it was like that before too, but when we did rhyme, what did you do? What are you talking about? Don't play dumb. I'm asking how you beat me. Beat you? During that drive-by thing, did I beat this guy? I can't remember. Are you deaf? Say something. No, I don't remember. What? I can't remember a thing about what happened during Rhyme. Oof. The man frowns a little, but immediately forms a straight face again. So that's how you want to try to get out of it. Ugh. Suddenly he grabs me by my coat collar and presses me against the wall. This guy is stronger than he looks. Then I'll have to use force. It seems to be the most effective way for you. <laughs> Let me go. You really don't remember? I don't remember! Mm. The man stares into my eyes intently as if he's trying to find something. Fight me in rhyme one more time. What? I don't know how to do rhyme. <sighs> I'm pressed against the wall with even more force. Still going to say that? Then I will destroy what is important to you. 
I know of what's important to you. I know all about it. The man's eyes look at the computer, suggesting something. What this guy is talking about is probably... Ren. He's threatening me. If I don't accept, he's really going to do it. A dangerous atmosphere fills the room. But even now I don't feel like fighting him in rhyme. And I'm beginning to get angry at his ridiculous behavior. Um... Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling like some fisticuffs. Give me a break! I raise my knee to kick the man. But because of my awkward position, the attack fails and he guards it with one hand. <sighs> he pulls the leg he caught, and I fall down sliding along the wall I was pressed against. Ouch. While I endure the pain that hits straight to my back, the man sits on my stomach. Hey! What do you think you're doing? Shut up. With an indifferent expression, the man holds my arm and suddenly twists it. Ow, ow, ow. You can still do rhyme with only one hand. <sighs> this guy. If you don't want a broken arm, bite me. My arm creaks, bent backwards and twisted at the joint. I absolutely do not want to do rhyme. I don't want to make any trouble for Ren, either. What should I do? Um... I hear something on the stairs? Just now, a sound came from the stairs. But I can't afford to think about what it is. Uh. Alba! Uh. Suddenly the door opens and Kojaku flies in. Kojaku? Why are... I sent you a message saying I'd come talk about Mizuki, didn't I? But more importantly, you bastard, let go of Alba. Kojaku growls and grabs the man. <laughs> the man falls down on the floor with Kojaku, and a struggle begins. My arm is released and I'm now free, but it's already too late. Stop it, both of you! Ugh. Bastard. Mm. Yeah. Hey! I can't stop them because they're rolling and tumbling all over the place. The man avoids Kojaku's attack and grabs his shoulder, trying to kick him in the stomach. Kojaku dodges it with his hand and returns the favor with a headbutt. <laughs> that slows the man's movements, but he immediately kicks Kojaku in the stomach again. Mm. Asshole! Kojaku retreats to a safe distance and the knee of the man goes just above the hem of his kimono. Kojaku, fed up with the bratty man who won't behave, raises his fist fiercely. Then, a sound comes from the window. Everyone's attention is turned to there. Master! Uh... Eh? You brats are too noisy! Give me a break! I've got a broken hip. I don't know how I got up these stairs. Door opens violently and Granny's angry voice echoes throughout the room. Kojaku, the man in green, gas mask guy, and I all stop moving and turn to look at Granny as if we were little chicks. You youngsters. A very visible blood vessel appears on her forehead and she looks at us with eyes burning with anger. Everyone, downstairs. Right now.